Welcome to the Amphenol Broadband Training of the Extreme Broadband Mocha Training Series. In this video, we'll provide a Mocha overview. In this video, we'll look at what is Mocha, what can Mocha do, how does Mocha work, and we'll look at the Mocha signal. What is Mocha? Mocha stands for Multimedia Over Coax Alliance. It's an association of equipment manufacturers, service providers, consumer electronic retailers, semiconductor vendors, and test and measurement equipment companies, developing and promoting a new standard for home entertainment networks. MOCA is a medium to distribute and share information among devices utilizing the existing coaxial wiring in a home, MDU, or building. MOCA is home networking. MOCA can network a home by carrying large amounts of information and data through existing coaxial wiring. There are currently three versions of the MOCA standard. MOCA 1.0 can deliver 135 megabits per second throughput. MOCA 1.1 can deliver 175 megabits per second. And MOCA 2.0 can deliver between 400 to 800 megabits per second, depending on which options are used, such as channel bonding. MOCA can deliver multiple streams of HD content and interconnect data services. One of the biggest drivers for MOCA and cable TV networks is multi-room DVRs, which enable video recordings on a DVR to be shared with other set-tops. But MOCA is capable of so much more, such as multi-room gaming, extended wired and wireless networks, mobile devices, as well as being able to support future applications. When putting the MOCA standard together, there were certain installation objectives. It had to be easy to install, either by the cable technician or the homeowner. It also needed to support any type of cable configuration, such as home run. This is the preferred wiring configuration of most cable operators, where all cables originate at one central point, normally the demarcation point, and each outlet has a dedicated coaxial cable. The other cable configuration type is called looped. This is where the signal from one splitting device will feed another splitter on some or all of the outlets. This is found in some multiple dwelling units or homes that are wired by the homeowners. The MOCA signal is very robust and can work in both of these cable configurations as long as good quality passive devices and connectors are used and installed properly. There should be minimal need to replace splitters and coaxial cables. And lastly, any MOCA device called a node will be able to communicate with any other MOCA enabled device. The MOCA physical topology looks the same as the traditional cable topology. In this example, a two-way splitter with each output port feeding another two-way splitter. The MOCA nodes are installed similar to the way a standard set-top box is installed. When we look at the logical topology, this is where the big difference is between a MOCA network and a traditional cable network. With a MOCA network, any MOCA-enabled device can communicate with any other MOCA-enabled device, where in a traditional cable network, the communication path is from the head end to each device, and from each device back to the head end. MOCA 1.0 supports up to 8 nodes and MOCA 1.1 and 2.0 will support up to 16 MOCA nodes. So if we look back at the physical topology, if MOCA node 1 need to talk to node 2 or 3 to 4, now it's taking a different path from standard cable TV signals. Here it's taking a port-to-port -port isolation path. If node number 1 need to talk to node number 4, or 2 to 3, it takes an insertion loss path, a port to port isolation path, and another insertion loss path. 
For more information on Mocha signals through passive devices, see our video on Mocha and passive characteristics. Mocha uses some very high frequencies, typically 1125 to 1675 MHz for cable TV applications. Mocha enabled devices can communicate by transmitting and receiving unique data through the coaxial cable. These frequencies pass through the existing passive devices and coaxial cabling in the home. Let's look at the Mocha frequency spectrum. Traditional spectrum used for cable TV starts with the return at 5 to 42 megahertz. At 50 megahertz starts the traditional analog signal, which normally extends to 550 megahertz. And depending on your system, the digital signals may go from 550 to 750, 860, and a few up to 1000 megahertz. With Mocha 1.0 and 1.1, the signals fall between 860 megahertz and 1600 megahertz. As this is an area that is not typically used by cable TV, there won't be any interference issues. With Mocha 2.0, they extended the bandwidth to 1675 MHz and then added a block of bandwidth down in the 500 MHz range for satellite operators to use. In the Mocha bandwidth, Mocha 1.0 and 1.1 uses 50 MHz wide channels and they're broken into four channel bands, band A, B, C, and D. A1 and B1 are used for direct broadcast services. C1 through C4, 900 to 1025 megahertz, is used for phone MOCA services. And band D, which contains eight channels, is used for cable TV MOCA services. And also any consumer electronic retail MOCA device also uses the D band. Only one channel can be used at a time in each channel band. The channels are agile and can change depending on the channel condition. It normally starts with channel D1 and analyzes the signal to see if it meets the MOCA signal requirements. If so, it stays on that channel. If not, it jumps to the next channel and continues the process until it finds a channel that meets the MOCA signal requirements. Mocha uses Orthogonal Frequency Division Multiplexing, OFDM, which is a frequency division multiplexing scheme utilizing a multi-carrier modulation method. It uses 224 closely spaced independent subcarriers that are used to carry data. Each of these subcarriers can be independently modulated from each other using adaptive constellation multitone. And the modulation technique on each of the subcarriers can change based on the physical characteristics of the signal path. And will optimize the modulation according. Each subcarrier communicates using the best modulation possible from BPSK to 256 QAM. The advantage of the MOCA signal is its ability to cope with severe channel conditions such as high attenuation and reflections. It does this by probing the signal path for impairments. If you wanted to watch something in the bedroom that was recorded on the multi-room DVR in the living room, the Mocha device will probe the signal path for micro-reflections, high attenuation, etc. The data rates between Mocha nodes will vary depending on the physical characteristics of the path between the transmit and receive nodes. With Mocha 1.0 and 1.1, the maximum physical layer data rate is 270 megabits per second. Due to forward error correction and additional overhead, it reduces the actual data rate. Mocha 1.0 has a throughput of 135 megabits per second, 1.1 175 megabits per second, and 2.0 400 800 megabits per second throughput. And since all devices are using the one channel, Throughput is reduced based on the number of connected devices. Since Mocha is an in-home network, it needs something to control the network. 
One Mocha device assumes the role of network controller and is automatically selected. Usually this is the first device on. Starting with Mocha 1.1, the network controller can be selected. A backup network controller is assigned in the event something happens to the main network controller. The network controller emits new nodes to the network. The network controller sends out beacon transmissions. New nodes listen for the beacon and request to join the network. If it doesn't hear the beacon, it assumes it's the first device on and sends out a beacon for other devices to join its network. The network controller acts like a traffic cop and tells all the other Mocha devices when they can receive and transmit data. Let's review what we've covered in this Mocha 101 overview. We explained Mocha can network a home by carrying large amounts of information and data through the existing coaxial wiring. Mocha is a very reliable home networking solution. Mocha uses frequencies 1125 to 1675 MHz, and we explain the Mocha signal modulation technique. Thank you for viewing this training from our Mocha training series on Mocha Overview. For additional training topics, see our website at www.amphenolbroadband.com.